Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, like I mentioned last week, uh, I pulled the rear end out from under the car. I just want to check a few things over. Not sure how many people are actually interested, but I figured I'd do a video anyway. So, uh, I meant to time how long it took to pull the rear end out, and I forgot to time it. It didn't take that long. Of course, I've done it a few times now, so it's getting easier. So anyway, I got the rear end out. And I got the I got it sitting over here and uh, in this video we're just going to check a few things over to see if we can figure out what's wrong. So the first thing I'm going to check to see how smoothly it turns. I watched the video and one of the things they claimed is if it turns smooth you shouldn't have to worry. So anyway we'll Okay, it turns perfectly smooth. There's like no notchiness, no lumpiness in it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna check is the pinion bearing preload with the carrier still in. So when I originally set this, I set it for it was just barely 12 and they, they recommend between 12 and 15. So we'll measure it here now. Okay, there's an issue I think. She's barely even 10, and that's with the carrier. When I measured it before, it was just barely 12 on the pinion. Then when I put the carrier in, it went up to 13 or 14. Now it's... Now it barely registers. Less than... It's not even 5. Now, I know that they break in some. They loosen up. Because they say when you put it together with the uh, used bearings, you're only looking for six or seven inch pounds, but this should be more than this. So that could be an issue. When I go this way, it's just barely reading anything. And this way, now it reads a little different going in this direction just because if you look at it, it's not perfectly zeroed anyway, but still, that it ain't got enough mileage on it, I wouldn't think, to wear them bearings in. Anyway, so that there could be a potential issue. Now we're gonna measure backlash. Okay, so I've got the dial indicator set up. So right here, the backlash is around six thousandths and this here calls between six and ten thousandths okay we just moved the ring gear just a few teeth and now we're reading eight thousandths so it went we jumped from six to eight just by turning in a few teeth so we'll turn a few more see now uh, we're still at eight Still within specs, but that's two thousandths different difference from where we read before. So we've moved a few more teeth. Now it's back down to six. I don't know if that's normal. I don't think it is, but just turn a few more teeth here. Now it's just a hair over seven, I think. Close to eight. Turn a few more teeth. About eight thousandths there. So anyway, it's about the same as it was. The backlash hasn't changed. Okay, guys, just bear in mind I don't have any experience when it comes to doing differentials. But I'm just inspecting the gears here. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera or not. Clean this all off here a little bit. I don't know if this comes off on camera, but if you can see, it looks like, the, okay, this side's the drive side, and it looks like we're coming off the edge 
harder than anywhere else because everywhere if you look at the pattern it just it looks like it's wearing more right on the very edge and then when you look at the coast side it's doing just the opposite now if you look at the coast side I don't know it looks like it's coming in a little harder on the on the lower end the drive side's coming off on this end hard because it's leaving some scrapes this this uh, the coast side looks like it's coming in on the lower part of the two so it could be what I got to do is change the pinion depth and maybe get the coast side to move up and the drive side to move down but again I'm furthest thing from an expert but just looking at the teeth all these teeth on the drive side got are more shiny right on the very tips so maybe it's up too high and it's riding off the back if you, it's where especially right there I think you can see that, like I say that's the the drive side and then we'll go to the coast side and I'll see if I can find some see it's coming in quite low on the tooth on the coast side and I seen some that had scrapes on them yeah or no that's not a scrape I'll see if I can find one that I was looking at Okay, right there. It looks like it's catching the the toe of the tooth on the coast side. Yeah, like there just appears like it's gouging a little bit. So maybe the best choice for me is to try. Anyway, I'll put some gear compound on it, and we'll do a pattern. Okay, so I went and put some paint on and did a, another pattern. Now that coast side definitely wouldn't hurt to move that up. The problem is when you move that up, the drive side moves down. And it already looks like it's pretty low on the tooth. But again, like I said before, it looks like it's still riding off the top. So... Sometimes you can tell more with the ghost. They call it ghost pattern or something like that. See the drive side. Bring in some more light here. Okay, so this is the drive side. It looks like it's coming off the back pretty hard. But again, Seeing that I know almost nothing about doing gears, obviously, uh, my opinion is not that great. It also might be in a little deep on the coast side, maybe. No, it's, well, just set. So no, it's not, I thought it was going in deep, but actually there's, there's still a fair amount of tooth right there. So it's not coming in and gouging in here. Like I say, I think it would serve me better to move that up the only pro issue i'm worried about is moving this down too far but anyway i'm thinking well i already knew that we didn't have the gears meshing right obviously it's making noise it's also really quite a bit looser than what it was when i first put it together i don't know if that's normal i wouldn't think the bearings would wear in that fast but anyway, we'll uh, we'll take it apart some more and take a look at the bearings. Okay, so I got it all apart. Uh, pinion bearing looks good, and the uh, pinion bearing races look good, and it still had some tension on it, although it had a lot less preload than what uh, it was when I first put it together. But that might be normal. I don't know. But I did find something that was suspect, and that's the carrier bearings. And more specifically, the races. 
I don't know how well the camera will bring it up. You see that graying area? Now that's normal. That's uh, carry bearings wearing in, but if you look, it's not even. You look right, I don't know if the camera will bring it up or not, but right there it's the it's not even. It's almost like they are they were moving back and forth a little bit. Uh, let's see if the, I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not. Okay, maybe it will here. You can see how it's not even. That should be an even line, but if you look, it's not. Right here. It's like it's not even touching the inside. It goes up and down. I don't know, if, like I say, I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not, but that's unusual. It looks like the carrier's moving. I think that's just dirt there, it's not a pit. So I think that is suspect. I don't know if I had enough carrier bearing uh, preload. It's almost like the carrier's either, carrier's either turning, it's not turning perfectly round, or it's moving, moving around when it's under power, and then it, probably when you go into coast, it, it moves around some more. So that is definitely suspect. Next thing I'm gonna, and this is on both bearings are this way. They're not an even. Whereas the, the like the pinion bearings got an even. Uh, you can see where it's wearing in evenly. So I'm gonna put the carrier back in without the pinion and just see if what kind of uh, kind of preload is on it. Okay, so I got the carrier back in without the pinion. And there is drag on it, so there is preload. I I don't know why them bearings were look the way they do. It almost looks like it's moving, but it's like I say, it's got drag on it. And I also put a pry bar in here just to see if I could move that from one side to the other. And there's no movement. And it's nice and smooth, so it isn't, it's not that it's got too much preload. So, I don't know, I don't think the bearings are the issue. I think it is the gear is just not meshing properly. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it a night. And I think what I am going to do is change the pinion depth. I think I'm going to try to make a tool to see if I can measure the actual uh, pinion depth because all pinions, or at least a lot of them do, they come with a number stamped right on them. And this one here, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it says uh, 2.311, meaning it needs to be uh, 2.311 inches away from the the carrier center line or the the I don't know if I'm saying this right but anyway that's the depth that it should be from the the ring gear center center line if you were to measure right from the very center there's tools you can get that makes this make this a lot easier that goes right in here and it, it, it gives you the exact center of your ring pin or your ring gear and from the center line there should be 2.311 inches between the center line and the face of the pinion gear I don't have that tool because it's quite expensive the cheapest one I could find was like 600 bucks I really don't want to make that investment so I think what I'm gonna do so I'm going to try and make myself a tool that'll at least get me in the ballpark. Luckily, I got the tools to remove bearings now. So I'll remove these bearings, put on a test bearing, and well, actually, I don't even have to remove the bearing first. We'll uh, put it in the way it is and see how far away, how far off the 2.311 is. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video, and I'm going to tomorrow. I'm going to change some stuff around do it all over again i may video it if if it's a success if it isn't well then there'd be no sense in putting it up anyway guys thanks for watching
and we'll catch you in the next one.